Welcome back to the bottom line here on Woodward Sports Network. Neil Rule in for Ryan Armani. Rest of the squad is up in here, though. Braylon Edwards, Maz, Art, Alex is in here also. And right now, as promised, we'll welcome in the radio voice of the Los Angeles Rams. Also does games for the Pac-12 Network. He is JB Long. You can follow him on Twitter at JB underscore Long. And JB, appreciate you taking the time to join us. And look, I mean, on the Detroit angle, certainly everybody's talking about Matt Stafford and Matt Stafford going up against his home team. You know, for you guys out there in LA, there, there's some homecomings too, isn't there? Yeah, there are a lot of them to just talk about. In fact, I was going through kind of the Detroit Lions media release and they did a really nice job presenting so many of them and kind of dedicating a page to each. Uh, Jared, the headliner, but you know, Michael Brockers, I think, was integral in terms of establishing the culture, the work ethic along this defensive front that, you know, continues through Aaron Donald and Sebastian Joseph Day and has become a real strength, real calling card of the Rams hey, defense in this in this season. Uh, Aubrey Pleasant was one of my favorite assistant coaches to be around and to interact with. Uh, even someone like Nikhil Roby Coleman on the practice squad, who I think got bumped up last week, was a joy to be around. So uh, from Brad Holmes all the way through, that there is a lot of Rams flavor on this uh, Lions rebuild. JB, how's it going? Brother, that was coming to you. How's the weather out there? Because it's uh, pretty chilly here, man. <laughs> it's pretty chilly here right now, man. Uh, yo, I want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, yo, talk about Jared Goff and how it just completely went south very fast with Jared Goff, the Los Angeles Rams, and Sean McVay as a head coach. It just seems like it went fast quick. Talk about that a little bit for us. Yeah, it declined almost as quickly as it inclined in 2017 when Sean McVay took over and uh, Jared Goff emerged into a two-time Pro Bowl quarterback with 40-plus wins, a couple of playoff victories, an NFC Championship game. If you had told me this is where we would be after that 2018 trip to New Orleans and the NFC Championship game win, I, I don't think I could have believed you. I mean, there was truly a time where my initial solid Jared Goff professional career. I'd covered him since his days at Cal, what he had done turning that program around, and it felt like he was doing the same for the Los Angeles Rams, who were a four-win team, you know, when he arrived and played that rookie season. So it, it was tough to stomach in a lot of different regards. Unfortunately for Jared, he never seemed to take that next step uh, from the Super Bowl and beyond. Part of it is a result of his circumstances. I think the Rams uh, made some missteps with their personnel around him coming off of that Super Bowl. But I think what you're seeing now where Jared is maybe struggling to transcend those circumstances not necessarily able to elevate the other 10 around him the way that Matthew Stafford did through a dozen seasons is characteristic of, of where the rubber met the road here in Los Angeles, too. And J.B. Long joining us here, the radio voice of the Rams, also does games for the Pac-12 Network. So when you're staying up late watching football here <laughs> in Detroit, uh, chances are uh, you're hearing J.B. Long's voice on there. Uh, grateful for his time. But, J.B., what about that, too? And, and for the Lions fans here, and you know this well, because – with Brad Holmes uh, now in charge and making the calls on draft day and everything like that, what I've talked about with this Rams team is that you look at the success they've had without the aid of first-round draft picks. And, and if anybody, if you ever talk to a Lions fan, JB, the draft has been the problem. Now, you, now you know the Indomitian Sues and you know the Calvin Johnsons and the Matt Staffords. That hasn't been the problem. You know, the, the obvious picks haven't been the problem. But between rounds two and six, it's it's been a struggle bus uh, for the Lions for a very long sometimes time. Sometimes round one. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah sometimes round one. <laughs> yeah. But this this is Brad Holmes' forte. You you saw this. You know this deeply. I guess kind of make that case for Brad Holmes and what he can do from a draft perspective. Because because all I can do, JB, to the, the watchers and the listeners, is sell this hope based on a resume. But it's a strong resume. Yeah, well, how do your fantasy owners like Cooper Cup? Are, are they doing a good job this season oh uh, carrying them to weekly victories? Because Sheesh. you know he was a small school kid out of Eastern Washington, and uh, there were a lot of other good receivers on the board right in that that third round territory in 2017. When he became the second pick of the Sean McVay era, and there are numerous others, and they don't have to be draft picks necessarily. Um, you look at Darius Williams, who does such a great job opposite Jalen Ramsey as the second corner. And if you're the second corner opposite Jalen Ramsey, you're getting a lot of work. You're getting thoroughly vetted, and he was sensational last season and again this year before he was injured. He was a waiver wire claim from Baltimore. So I think the Rams philosophically in recent years when they've been dealing these first-round picks have been committed to those top 100 picks um, on day two of the draft, finding values that other teams are overlooking um, and I think Brad and Ray Agnew bring a lot of that to Detroit, and I think that will serve them well. 
But let's be serious, they also have to capitalize and find the next Indomitian Sioux or Calvin or whoever it is with those first round picks that came with Jared Goff to the Motor City. JB, I wanted to ask you about uh, when Matthew Stafford came over, the Cabo, uh, the whole the whole thing, <laughs> how it all happened, how it, un it unfolded overnight, Tell basically. Tell the truth. I mean, what did you guys think about that when it, when it actually happened? So I'll never forget. Obviously, that was in the height of uh, COVID in, in California and Los Angeles here. We were experiencing it really badly. Uh, finally, my family and I got out of the city to go for a quick uh, overnight ski trip that we <laughs> thought was for our two boys. And anytime you leave the zip code and you try and put your phone away, that's usually when breaking news happens. And that's exactly <laughs> how it went down for the Rams and Matthew Stafford. Um, it's interesting how Cabo kind of played into the offseason because you know, the Rams went to Seattle and won a wild card game and were pretty vocal about sending their rival to Cabo. That's kind of like the uh, you know the NBA says gone fishing, right? When that team gets bounced from the playoffs, I guess in the NFL it's uh, C and Cabo. And you know, the trash talking back and forth with Jamal Adams and some others is pretty good. Lo and behold, the Rams end up there the following week after Green Bay eliminates them. And it worked out, I think, for their short-term benefit because they found their, their next franchise quarterback. Um, I think you always kind of run in opposite of what you have, right? And you look for what the deficiency that you weren't able to correct. And Matthew Stafford is, in some ways, antithetical to Jared Goff because uh, he's so good off schedule. He's not the most mobile quarterback, but as you know, he's extremely athletic and use every arm uh, slot angle to... Uh, handle the various things that come off at him when the play breaks down. And uh, I could see why Sean McVay and Les Snead saw him as the best available veteran option to maximize what's left of Aaron Donald, who is in his year 30 season, and Jalen Ramsey's prime together. These windows where you have two Hall of Fame talents on defense and maybe the best defensive player who's ever walked the planet playing in their prime. You got that you right. Got the and I can join all in in that regard. JB Long joins us, the Rams radio voice. Uh, I feel like you're talking about my my hot ex girlfriend, and I'm getting a little bit pissed here <laughs> just hearing about <laughs> it. But uh, when he came over, uh, when he finally got there, I want to ask you this because I know the Detroit way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Do you think, let's say he was with the Rams for the past 12 years, how many Super Bowls do you think they would have won? Well, the last 12 years weren't exactly their sweet spot, right? Until uh, yeah. Sean McVay turned it around, it had been a dozen seasons or more since they had you know, gone to the playoffs and won a game. So he certainly could have, uh, I think, managed some of that better and given them a better opportunity. Um, what's cool about your fan base and even hearing you gentlemen speak about Stafford is the admiration that I sense still coming through. There's not a week that has gone by yet this calendar year and certainly not this season that I haven't heard from a Detroit Lions fan who's said that the been there in the second season, just how much they respect not everything he did for that city. Uh, so, you know, it, it's tough to say. This division's been so strong, right? Like Seattle had their time. The Niners rose to the top. Then it's the Rams' turn, and now Arizona's uh, undefeated and atop the NFC West. So would Stafford have taken them to higher heights? Would he have a playoff win if he were playing in horns for the last 12 seasons? Probably, I'd like to think so, but who are we to say? All right, well, JB, we certainly do appreciate your time coming on here on the bottom line. And, hey, I, I always do this when I listen to the games on Sunday. I always listen to the visiting team's radio feed on the, on the satellite radio. So I'll actually be listening to you. Appreciate the time again. Thanks a lot. All right, Neil, thank you for the invitation. JB, JB, let me, let me throw one more question at you real quick. Just a quick one, just yeah, a quick one. Talk no, about good. Kyler Murray, man. He's he's the man. Like, early in the season, I thought you guys in the Los Angeles Rams, after the win against the Tampa Bay Bucks, I said, oh, man, Los Angeles and, and Matt Stafford, they're real. But Kyler Murray, the reemergence of James Conner, A.J. Green, and J.J. Watt, are you guys in trouble? Do you think that out there in uh, Los Angeles? Well, I, I appreciate what they did, kind of layering in those veteran stalwarts uh, who, who elevate the standard, I think, and, and show them the right way to go about it because that all plays into the thinking out here, right? It, it's an arms race. When Russell Wilson plays at an MVP level, when Kyler Murray gets drafted number one overall, when the Niners go out and get Trey Lance, when the Rams trade for Matthew Stafford, um, this is for real out here. But what, what stands out to me, Braylon, about Kyler is he has somehow maintained or even captured that locker room, despite in week 17 at SoFi Stadium, having a chance to get his team to the playoffs 
and missing the better part of three quarters with an injury and then kind of just meandering back into the game in the fourth quarter. And I can't speak for him and, and his physical presence, but a lot of us were looking around being like, man, with your season on the line, is this your guy? How's his locker room going to feel about him, you know, kind of just meandering back in in a game that he could have maybe helped get them to the postseason? Then he goes and talks about pursuing a baseball career this offseason, and it just doesn't strike the right tone. But were we ever wrong? I mean, he's dialed in, and Oof. A.J. Green and J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones playing for a big contract. It's all working really well. Yes, it is. I appreciate that. I didn't mean to keep you too long. I had to, I had to get that question out there. Nailed all right, well, J.B., again, we, we appreciate it, man. I'll, we'll, uh, I'll be listening anyway on Sirius Satellite Radio. So thanks again for the time. J.B., thank you. I appreciate you.